Now then, today was the first episode of the Borderlands show, which had Paul Sage, who was one of the head honchos of Borderlands on, where he answered a lot of questions about various stuff, like the title of this video, but also gave us some new information on the Bloody Harvest event, which is happening next month. We'll go over exactly what it is, what you'll be doing, how long it'll last for, those kind of areas. But the title of this video is how it's not likely that we're going to see any new DLC Vault Hunters in the same vein as Gage and Krieg for Borderlands 2, and then Aurelia and Jack for the pre sequels. I'm not going to put this answer five minutes in to make you watch it longer. This is what Paul said about new DLC characters and why it's most likely that we'll not see any in Borderlands 3. Uh, probably not. No, really? No. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you were asking me earlier, Fran, uh, about data that we use. Um, and one of the things that we actually saw was once people have picked their character, um, not everybody, yeah. it's, there, there are no everybody's, yeah. right? but a lot of people stick with that character uh, and want that character to remain. Furthermore, in Borderlands 3, what we did is we we really concentrated on diversity within the characters themselves yep. and having a lot of different builds. So that was where we, we put our eggs in the basket. Now, some people might want more, but I, I, I don't think that's the way to go for, not for Borderlands 3. Or what we'd see from data was we might see people like play uh, you know, five levels. Sure. And then get back to their main, you know, yeah. and, and get that taste. And, it, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's all those decisions you make along the way that tie to those characters. Okay. It's worth adding that he doesn't say for certain that we're not going to get new DLC characters. It wouldn't surprise me if in like a year's time we start getting them. It really depends. Just adding in new characters like that, I think would be a great way to bring in players to play for the story again. So I wouldn't say never say never, but I understand the reasoning of stuff like that. And I mean, if they have the data to support that players aren't going to play the new DLC characters, then fair enough. But I still think that we may see them in the future at least some point. They did say quite some time ago that they'd rather focus on the characters themselves and focus on the skill trees of the four existing Vault Hunters, maybe changing, reworking aspects of stuff, maybe even adding in new skill trees as a whole, making it four instead of three. Especially as new DLC gets added in and the level cap goes higher from 50 to 55 to 60, whatever, that's where I can see extra talents being added in and a lot of the systems there being reworked. But we do have similar questions that were asked at the end of this video, namely, is Borderlands coming to Switch? What's happening with cross-platform? And where is Fiona from Tales from the Borderlands? But in Paul Sage's own words, what is this next Halloween event Bloody Harvest like? What should we expect? What's the general gist? So Bloody Harvest is going to start where you might expect it to start, right? It's it's uh, in October. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, it, it follows a very Halloween-like theme, okay. uh, even though it's called Bloody Harvest, right? Um, and it is essentially, it's actually real content. I mean, there, there is real content that goes around. This what does thing. that mean? What does okay. that mean? It's real content. So, so when I say real content, what I mean is that it, once it's activated, it's activated for everybody. Okay. Right. It's if you've bought Borderlands, this is included in the price of your purchase. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, and so with that, it means that there is a mission uh, that goes alongside this. There are new challenges that go alongside this. There are new enemies. There's new equipment. On the Borderlands website, there is already a full page spread talking about the event. We'll pick up bits and pieces from it. But first, I wanted to go over the key question. When should we expect it? So Bloody Harvest, uh, I, I believe it will be out um, late October. OK, OK, well, so, so, yeah. so okay, I, I think that lines up. <laughs> yeah, I think there's about a two week period uh, w in which we can re release targeting, it at this point. Yeah. Targeting, and yeah. again, it's one of those things where everything has to line up. You know, you have to go through certain all that of stuff course, to, get, course. to get it done. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So we'll be expecting this event in about a month's time. It wouldn't surprise me if it's around a month after launch. So basically in 30 days time, about four weeks. This is what the website says about it though. It's the first of many free updates and events that you can expect from Borderlands 3. For the duration of the event, any Vault Hunters who have departed Pandora for the first time and started exploring the far reaches of space of Vault Sanctuary 3 will start to encounter haunted enemies around the galaxy, meaning that you don't need to finish the story to play this. These haunted enemies are your key to accessing the new event specific map, which as you'll notice from the gameplay behind, is a reskin of Athena, and this area is called Heck. But not only is there a new zone and new enemies, these haunted version of Maliwan troops, there's also a new mechanic called Terror. And I'm going to use Paul Sage's audio again because he does a better job at describing this better than I ever could. So Terror is actually a debuff uh, okay. that can be applied or that is applied to the player. Uh, and that causes the player to um, essentially, it affects what we call sway or oh, aim. No. And so you get effects on your screen that kind of like, so once you're terrorized, so to yeah, speak, yeah. Uh, then this affects how you aim and things of that nature. So um, 
there is gear, the drops that we just talked mm. about, uh, that can speak to that, that it can actually help with that. And I, to- I told you that there were guns, there's a grenade, and there's a shield. What I didn't tell you was there's also anointed, uh, what we call parts, that affect terror. So there is some of these parts that will take terror and actually turn it to your benefit. Okay. Uh, so finding these different parts as you know as part of it. So uh, if you're playing this, you can play this in Mayhem mode just like anything else. Uh, so how do you get to this new zone? Heck, well you kill all of these haunted enemies around the galaxy and they will drop a currency called Hectoplasm, because of course. And this can be turned into Maurice, which is a new character that will be aboard Sanctuary 3 that you can turn this into. This is what they'll look like on screen, no doubt in one of the rooms that we can't get into just yet. So as soon as we start seeing Maurice on the ship, that's go time for the events and he will be the person to go to for all future events, maybe DLCs as well in the future. The article continues, once you've earned entry into the Bloody Harvest map, beware the dreadful dangers abound at every turn. Look for the shadowy sky and you'll see ringed Racco lanterns, again of course, soaring through the air eager to swoop down and breathe fire in your face. Tread lightly for a ghastly graveyard crawling with Malawan goons who reserved a burial spot just for you. Resist the urge to wretch as you fight through a ratch infested pit with rivers of blood running through it. As I said, you've seen from all of the pictures, a nice reskin of a phoenix. The best part is this bit certainly as a Tron fan, because he's making a return. But instead of Captain Tron, we have Captain Haunt. And this is a picture of him on screen. The article says he's back, albeit a bit bonier, complete with spooky new powers. Any who dare to enter the domain of the monstrous boneheaded boss should be ready for one hell of a fight. Not necessarily a raid boss, it might be, but it's not likely. Just a new and improved and much more difficult fight against Captain Haunt. In regards to loot, what can you expect? Paul Sage also gives us a bit more info here. New uh, loot? Yeah, absolutely new loot, okay. right? So I know we at least have two brand new guns. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a new shield. Okay. And uh, I want to tell you that there is also a new grenade mod yeah. uh, with it as well. So And they're themed for the event, obviously. They are themed for the event. We'll finish this talking about cosmetics and costumes. Bloody Harvest is also the perfect time to rock some costumes and you'll be able to earn some new cosmetic rewards during an event. You can earn an Echo Device skin, a weapon trinket, a skin for each of the four Vault Hunters, which I'm showing you on screen, and also applies to Moses Iron Bear and also Flax Pets, and a global weapon skin to your collection if you dedicate yourself to destroying the dead and like we went over there's going to be new weapons legendary drops and anointed weapons that take the terror debuff and make it your strength the final two questions i wanted to go over are how long will it last from the event being live to also how much content is realistically in there how quickly will be done with the content if we're trying to just you know dedicate a lot of time to playing it when it comes out this will last about a month and a half okay yeah okay, yeah and and again the thing to remember about these events and these items that we just talked about, this is all something that goes away. So, limited time. Uh, yep, it's a limited time offer. So, once you've missed this, you know, there'll be new things coming on. Don't get me wrong, but this is the time to get in and experience this. And get the loot. So, right. You know, timing is one of those things that really depends on the people. Yeah. Right. You know, and how fast they get through something. Um, I, I think it's pretty meaty. Um, on the mission itself, it could be, you know, anywhere up to, I don't know, it's like two okay. to three hours, okay. you, sure. you know, just on that. Um, and then there are the challenges. Uh, it really depends on the people. So the event affects the whole galaxy. There's going to be haunted enemies around. You need to go find them out in the world, kill them, get ectoplasm, watch out for the Terra debuff, which is probably similar to the one in the Commander Lilith DLC, where you just got to watch the meter, I suppose, and make sure that you don't get fully infected. Get the ectoplasm, give it into Maurice. Then you'll unlock this Athena's map reskinned called Heck, where Captain Haunt will be waiting with some dead Malawan troops with brand new legendary loot. It'll be coming out the end of next month and will be lasting about six weeks. So it'll be done in about December. What comes after that? Well, there was no new information on the DLC that's coming at the end of winter. Most likely that's going to be the start of 2020 in January. But what about the Malawan takedown? This is a little bit of information that they gave on it. Again, didn't want to paraphrase, just taking it straight from the horse's mouth. Can't get into them too much. Here's what I'll say about takedowns. Mm -hmm. Takedowns are basically... Uh, if you remember Borderlands 2, we I had did. we had raids. It was one mm-hmm. big monster. This is this is something uh, like it's our version now of, of an updated raid. Okay, right. Um, and you know we've looked at uh, how we want to you know kind of balance this out. So you could go in as a lone player. I'm sure you can take this on just by yourself. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're actually two more people in there. So and okay. a lot of monsters in a lot of different areas and a lot of the, what's that? You sound, what? 
That's the, the footage? Who's that, giving that, me the missions? What's happening? That's right. That's that's all for next time. Well, I guess that makes sense. We need people to keep it's watching this show. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of people watching this show, Greg Way, Quaid James. Your ass better be watching this. When Borderlands <laughs> tweeted, we were hosting the Borderlands. So that's all of the information that we have on the event and what it entails. But I also wanted to include some pretty key questions that were asked to Paul Sage at the end. We included the new DLC Vault Hunter one and how it's not likely we'll see anything there. But what about cross-platform? Is that going to be happening anytime soon? That's a really good one. Yeah. Uh, for reasons I have personally, which is I, I like playing on the multiple systems. Sure. I want them to be able to do just that. Yeah. Carry the saves over everything else on, on the multiple system. So, um, yeah, great question. Yes, good answer provided for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is actually a really good answer and, and very truthful. Look at everybody. Like, nobody goes to work at a gaming studio, or very few people do, who aren't gamers themselves. Sure. And so, the, you know, the fact that that dam broke, um, and it's not completely broken, but there are cracks oh, all yeah. over the place. And so we're seeing that. And, and man, just all credit to first party for you know allowing that stuff to happen now because it's what players want and it's good for players and i'm super excited next up is a big question that no doubt a lot of us are wondering is borderlands free or any of the other borderlands games coming to switch anytime soon not unheard of not an untapped question you know i would say never say never soon okay mm. okay. okay interesting yeah interesting. that comment and the final question that i wanted to highlight Simply put, where is Fiona from Tales from the Borderlands, and will we see her anytime soon? Uh, Fiona is very happily doing Fiona things. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a big uh, universe. It <laughs> is a big universe, and so uh, can't talk about where Fiona is. Okay, okay, I like that. Uh, as long as she's out there somewhere doing something, I'm yeah. fine with it. Sucks that we won't hear anything more from the Tales from the Borderlands cast, at least for now. But I am quite happy that we saw at least a picture of Sasha and an echolog of Reese trying to track her down. I thought that was really interesting. I won't ruin it for those that want to find it yourself, but look in the Atlas headquarters. You'll find it there. But that is everything that I wanted to go over in this video. Did want to give some quick thoughts. The event sounds pretty cool. It might be done with fairly quickly, but events like this in other games like Destiny and the like, even Overwatch, tend to be a great way to get people to check the game out for 15 minutes and that being it so but that mixed in with the Maliwan takedown which seems like it's going to be a raid boss but a little bit bigger and also the DLC down the line I think we're going to have loads of content over the next at least three or four months but I'm glad that we got all of this information on this event which should be coming within the next 30 days or so but thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe if you haven't already for more Borderlands stuff and until next time take care see you then